Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepard. This is the 2nd of April, 2012, and what I'm holding up is the Eco Passport. And we'll see some pictures related to Earth Day in Bell, Arkansas, in the spring. And what an unusual spring it is. Well, starting off with a non native uh, plant, it's a juga. And uh, it's beautiful and it's uh, got some value to certain insects, but it's not a host plant for U.S. native insects. That grub was in the, the ground and I just thought I'd share it. I, I don't know, I left it there and I don't know what it'll turn into. That is Blue Star, Amsonia, forgot the rest of the name, a scientific name, but anyway, it's beautiful. It's a native plant. Uh, wildflower that normally wouldn't be bring, blooming this early in the year. That's another pale purple thing, and I have not determined its name, but I will, and I'm 99% sure it will be a Arkansas native, but I, I love those flowers. Look how, how the stems are so delicate, and the flowers are so small and delicate, and just had to show you several of those. There I, I, on the wetland area there, World Peace Wetland there, uh, Park, World Peace Wetland Prairie Park. Anyway, that will Nature Park. And that, I just have one picture on the disc, so uh, I'm not quite certain what it is either. I'm still searching, but it's another Arkansas native, I'll guarantee you. That one I can promise you, I did look it up to make sure. And it's a western wallflower. There are... Uh, there is a non-native uh, wallflower, but it's a, another color and so forth. That's the dark phase, or the well, it is the female of the uh, tiger swallowtail, and uh, some of them will be the same color as the tiger swallowtail, yellow and white and so forth and black. But uh, that one also was spinning around in the air as though she, was, she might be in love with a particular or one of the many uh, bright uh, tiger swallowtails. Of course, you recognize there uh, a, uh, a dragonfly, and uh, you'll see those in many colors over the growing season in northwest Arkansas and at World Peace Wetland Prairie. I think that's called a click beetle. Uh, somebody, nobody here can correct me, it appears, and uh, we'll just call it that. But I, the guy was out in the street, so I picked him up photographed him there to get his face and uh, instead of putting him down on the, the blacktop street I tossed him out into the bushes gently and there's a wasp and wasps are important pollinators that one happens to be on the uh, tree in flower and it was it's the um, river birch tree at World Peace Wetland Prairie and that is a piece of art by um, Okay, let's go on. It's going to be in the art show on in the eco tour, one of the activities. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, the chrysalis, probably of a moth, maybe a silk moth. It's empty now, and it's hanging up in a tree. And I never saw it till the the old leaves finally blew away, and and it had been emptied by its resident. That's Lanocera sempervirens, the native. Um, coral honeysuckle, and there's a lot of those flowers, but I tried to adjust that picture, but it didn't work out too well. Uh, they're way up high, and that's part of the Eco Passport, and it's a page, it's the 33rd item, and it's on April 15th, a week before official Earth Day. Anyway, you'll see the Eco Passport available around town, and uh, I, uh, meant to share, if I didn't, um, it didn't come up, a uh, picture of both sides of this little book. But it's now up to, for this year, it's turned out to be 25, 27 pages touting 100 events, or at least 98 I can see got listed here. So you're going to be really busy if you're trying to learn all you can about Earth Day and enjoy all these activities and events that are listed there. A lot of sponsors, most of them 
uh, so many of them are like Omni and Sierra Club and and other groups that are, are nonprofits and but uh, in addition there are some corporate sponsors and and they uh, they don't get any better treatment than the the poor old nonprofits. This is supposed to be a nonprofit thing for the earth. So until next time, this is Arbor Shepherd asking you to do your part to help keep the water clean, the air pure, and the woods green. See ya. Hello, I'm Arbor Shepherd. This is the fifth day of April 2012, and we're going to share some photos from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And of course, this is the first day of the Earth Day celebration. Uh, that's lasting 40 days into May, and we'll start with a big old dump truck about to pull out on Maple Avenue. And the reason is all those buildings you see are coming down. By the time this is broadcast on cable access, uh, public access TV, those buildings will all be gone. In fact, at the moment as we speak, uh, I believe all three of those houses are gone. Two of them were gone yesterday afternoon, and uh, that building there uh, is probably next on the list. Those houses were easy and quick. Trees are being removed. Trees are being damaged on this site. They're going to build a huge uh, student apartment complex there, and that's you can see the railroad at left and the trail underneath the overpass. Uh, on Lafayette, we're on Lafayette Street looking north of the railroad, Frisco, and that's Frisco Trail. So those buildings are, okay, that's the, uh, on uh, West Avenue, and that house is gone today. Three days ago, it was standing, and the house at right and left, both gone, and you'll see some of the destruction and how it looked the day after these pictures were made, but I was giving you a little sample of what the trees look like. Uh, the street's not level there, but the houses are, so I'm not sure I was standing level when I made some of those pictures. But uh, these are houses people lived in for decades, and probably they were, some of them were 100 years old or, or uh, 80 or 90 years old for sure, 1910. Um, would make them a hundred years old. So um, they're from that category. They're not new houses, but they were substantial and they took a big beating from those big machines to destroy them. And I don't know how many trees are gonna be left. That one appears to be protected there with the, uh, uh, the orange fencing around it. That's usually a tree protection fence, but usually they tear at the roots when they work. And Well, there's a company that's proudly doing this work, and uh, their sign was over on the entryway from uh, Maple Street. Okay, stick in something beautiful <laughs> to go with this. That's Lana Sierra Simple Brian's, one of my favorites. That's a picture made, uh, well, just a day or two before this, two days, I guess. And that's uh, also World Peace Wetland Prairie uh, Iris, sort of a unique uh, way the new bud is caught between the leaves there of the one that's already open. And that looks a little pixelated. I don't, I don't think I did any adjustment or anything on it, but it may look better on your screen. But that's looking to the southwest from West Avenue, and you see uh, Lafayette uh, where the bridge is that we took the photograph that we used to saw before. And uh, you can see the, the big machine crushing trees, crushing the parts of the buildings they're taking down, and they're in a rush. Notice the tree damage, the limbs. Those trees possibly could be, I don't see any protection around them. So apparently the uh, city arborists didn't protect them or they'd have to have an orange fence around them. So the fact that they're damaging them in the process of taking down buildings may mean nothing. Uh, it, they're going to be taken down anyway, I'm afraid. I don't know what happened to our tree ordinance. It's mostly being ignored or they're saying, well, this tree is old and it's no good anyway. So there's one of the houses that you saw standing in the earlier pictures. And that's the space where they all, all uh, two out of the three were gone at that point. That one on the, your left there is, is at the corner of West and uh, Lafayette. 
And that's showing out further, showing the steps left there. That's all that's left of that house. So, you know, if these guys somehow fail to build this, they will have uh, reduced the available housing in Fayetteville by what, 100 people, 200 people, or three or four of those big apartment buildings plus those houses along the street now. So the question is, <laughs> Is this really worthwhile, and how fast will those that bigger building be filled with tenants, and how much more will it cost to live there for people? It's just a rush right now to get construction started with uh, a lot less uh, discussion beforehand or uh, detailed estimation of the traffic problems and so forth. A lot of people were angry at the council meeting uh, on the uh, Today's fifth, that was the third, and spoke up against not that project. That's already been spoken against, and, and they were ignored. So different batch of people talking about something else uh, Tuesday night that uh, also got passed in spite of their concerns. We've already learned in the past that if they listen to the public, they make fewer mistakes. Till next time, Marvin Shepard asking you to do your part to help keep the water clean, the air pure, the woods green and think before you destroy anything useful.